Hello everybody, so real quick this morning, we're out here in the woods and we're going to be cutting some uh, trees for firewood. We're also going to be clearing some land to get the kids a swing set out here, kind of build like a little park eventually. Um, so I just wanted to share real quick this morning um, proper chainsaw care, how to keep your uh, chain fresh. Especially while you're in the woods, you don't want to be going back to your chainsaw sharpener. So how do you keep it fresh if you hit a stone or... Uh, just to keep it sharp as you as you keep working. <clears throat> so let me go over real quick what I have. It's a Husqvarna, um, the 460 Rancher. And then I also have a kit I keep out here. Good idea to keep uh, some kind of first aid. Inside the trauma kit is some medic shears, uh, some blood stopper, hemostat, tourniquet, Israeli bandage. That's a good idea to have. I also have some basic first aid um, in my wood cutting kit. In the wood cutting kit, I have just some tools that we might need. This is the sharpening vise that we'll be using today. Obviously, we need some gas, the basic first aid, bar oil, hearing protection that I use, eye protection. These aren't like safety glasses that'll fog up. This is made out of mesh, like a mesh screen. That won't fog up on you. Also the sprocket lube that we'll be using today. And the sharpening file that I use. Quick thing about your bar oil that you use. This is uh, just, I refill this bottle um, with the Husqvarna bar oil. Some guys will use, use motor oil, tra uh, transmission oil, things like that. Um, I mean, you can, whatever works, works, right? If you've ever seen bar oil though, it kind of most resembles like the Lucas oil that kind of sticks to everything. You want your bar oil to be slinging around that chain and not just dropping off on the ground after the engine, right? You want it to, to stick to your chain and carry through the cut. Um, so you really need a proper bar oil to do that. I mean, guys use transmission oil and things like that. And um, I'm sure it works to an extent, but it's not gonna work like uh, manufactured bar oil. If your bar oil is working properly, you're gonna be able to rev up that chainsaw and um, you're gonna see oil kind of sling off the front of that as it turns, the chain is turning around the front of your bar. And that's what you want. You wanna know that your oil is working, that it's carrying the oil um, and that it's sticking to the chain. If your oil is just dropping off and making a mess of your engine cover, it's not working right. You need to get a better bar oil. So here's what I'm gonna to do to freshen my chainsaw, my chain, try to keep it sharp throughout the day that I'm cutting. Um, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna avoid hitting the ground, try not to hit any stones. If you see, ever see a spark come off of something as you're cutting, you probably hit a nail, you hit something that has been in the tree, maybe you hit a bullet or something like that. I heard some crazy stories. 50 or $60 a piece for a chain, it's not something that you wanna do. So just keep your eye out and don't hit things you're not supposed to. Secondly, Whenever I fill up my bar oil, so your bar oil goes in the front here and your gas is gonna go back here, your pre-mix. Whenever I fill up the bar oil, I'm going to freshen up the chain. So your bar oil is, um, you're gonna fill this every second time you fill up the gas. First thing I'm gonna do is gonna take my, my stump vise, I'm gonna pound it in here with the back of my ax, and then I'm gonna mount the chainsaw um, to this stump vise. You don't have to have this. It makes life a lot easier. If you don't, go ahead and just do it on the ground. It'll work the same. All right, so maybe the first thing is to find a stump that is uh, not rotted. So how to find a better stump so I could actually pound this vise in so we can mount the chainsaw. Maybe the stump should actually be a little bit bigger too, but it's okay. This will work. It's, it's very sturdy. You know, yeah, it's hanging off the back. That's fine. Um, also, somebody might say, hey, the bar is upside down. So every time you gas up or every time you do this, so it's maybe every other time, go ahead and flip your bar over so you're gonna wear the bar evenly. The chain rides on this and you put pressure on the bottom usually when you're cutting and that pressure is going to wear out the bar. So wear your bar evenly and um, make sure that you, know, you get the most life that you do out of your bar. Also, if you develop any burrs on the side, as it wears out, you might feel like a little edge that's there. You're gonna go ahead and take a file and just knock those edges off. But usually this is the condition that you're going to find yourself in, right? You're in the woods, you put new gas in, you got new oil in, 
your bar your chain might feel like it's wearing out a little bit you're not seeing the chips fly off like it should so now you want to freshen it up so this is what i do in the field keep a fresh chain it's real easy to do this is sharpening a chain the easiest and fastest way um, you're going to get one of these files it's a chainsaw sharpening file get yourself a marker even for today we're not going to worry about this guide and you're going to mark one of these teeth so you know where you left off at okay so we got our paint marker and we marked one of the teeth now as we continue to file down the chain and we come back around we're going to move the chain we know where we left off at we don't keep filing all right here's the simple easy part down your chain you're going to have these teeth okay this front part is not a tooth this is the tooth that actually cuts and here's another one they face different directions so they cross cut into the wood that's why your bar shouldn't get stuck if you're not pinching yourself and these chains cut in different directions you can see this one is pointing out this way and the other one is going to cut in a different in a different direction that just determines which side which way you're going to file you see you have to place the file in the tooth if you want to file in this direction of course i'm holding it backwards place the file in the tooth if, when you file this direction and on this tooth you're going to file it in this direction. What angle do you hold it at? If you can see on this tooth there's a little line. You can see a little line that is going to show you the angle that you hold your file at. So when you come in on this tooth you're going to keep it aligned with that. So you're going to be parallel to that line. You're just going to file how you would file and you're going to count the number of strokes that you file. As you go down and file this, you're going to keep your angle aligned and you're going to count the strokes that you file. One, two, and usually I'll do between six or eight. And as you file the other direction, it's going to be the same thing. Go six or eight. Go all the way down, move your chain around, and make sure you get every tooth. All right, you're not looking really to dig in with the file. What you're doing is just straightening out any imperfections that you created while you were chain cutting. So that's the easiest way to do it. It probably takes two or three minutes. It keeps your, your chain uh, sharp. And as you keep your chain sharp, that's going to allow you to cut faster. So taking that little extra time is really going to be able to save you time as you're cutting throughout the day. There is a gear that's inside here, a sprocket that carries the chain around as the chainsaw is operating. And you want to keep that grease. So this is just a sprocket grease gun. It fits right inside the hole right here. You push it down and it greases your sprocket. I hope this helps somebody. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. We'll have more helpful content com coming out. Um, you know, I just try to film this real quick with my iPhone as I was at working. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have any ideas for future videos that you want to see, uh, go ahead and put them in the comments down below.